up YouTube and um, by the time you're watching this, uh, this should have been up for a while. It's the uh, KJM Custom M9 review. Uh, I just wanted to show a nice background, but this is the G17 review will be coming soon, but I wanted to review this real quick. Um, if you guys have watched my past videos, because you know I'm so popular, you would have seen this gun in the past. It is a skeleton sidearms, or um, for the OEM is Stark Arms. Now, um, this gun is absurdly garbage. Uh, the reason why I have it, I just basically got it for free, which is kind of nice. Um, the one problem with these is the hammer breaks a lot, especially the spring tabs. There is usually a lots of resistance with the slide travel. As you can see, it's like... You can literally feel that. There's quite a bit of resistance at the slide travel. My 18C, when you pull it back, it's just perfect travel on my ATM, but that's not going to be out for a little bit. I still need to get parts for it. They're coming in the mail right now. But anyways, so I was gonna review. Uh, I might as well review it anyways, because not everything about this gun is that terribly garbage. But uh, most of it is, to be honest. Anyways, so um, as you can see, this is a Canadian version. Um, whoever is a tech, once I open this up, you will kind of tell that it is a Stark Arms. Plus, it uses the exact same manual, which has SS instead of S. But as you can see, um, the gun's really bare. There's no trademarks or anything besides this. The frame is uh, tinted to clear smoke. It's a smoked low receiver, so. Canadian custom laws so they can get these through Taiwan. Um, I am running a Tokyo Murray stock plastic outer since the guy didn't include the metal one that was ported. Um, you have the, the standard Glock sights as you can see right there. Standard Glock sights. Um, these ones can use real steel sights but whoever had this previously before the guy I bought it from glued the rear sight in so I can't get it off because they're stupid. Um, let's just move this down. As you can see, it is, it is a little see-through, but I mean, it's what you get for living in Canada. Um, the slide is metal, so, and it is a TM clone, just like Stark Arms. If I take out the slide, the one problem is uh, the hammer is broken on here, so right here. As I said, the spring tab right there is broken right there, you can see right there. There normally be a spring tab and it comes flying back up. Fortunately, if you use a TM hammer in there, like I tried running my KM hammer through this, the one problem is the hammer sear, the way the hammer assembly is designed, the full auto sear doesn't fit in, in this slot right here, and then it gets caught in the hammer so it doesn't go down, which is the problem with TM hammers, that's what I noticed. Um, I do believe this is a newer model of the one I, because the one I had before, the hammer rotor broke on it, but this one, this hammer rotor, I have confirmed with the magnet, it is steel, I don't have my magnet with me right now, but it's like the Wii textile steel, so these shouldn't break, They're pre they seem pretty sturdy, since it is um, some sort of steel. It is really, it is pretty um, attracted to um, magnets, but if it hasn't broken and the hammer broke first, it's clearly decent. Uh, the trigger bar is steel, right here that's steel, but it's really tough to push down. As you can see, since the slide comes forward, there's kind of that dead spot, but I'll show you that in a minute, I'll talk about that in a moment. You have your disconnect, everything else is um, pretty shitty cast, the hammer uh, series is decent quality, but nothing to, uh, to lose sleep about. Slides release as standard as steel. Slide stop is steel. There's a lot of steel parts in this for ca to hold on to cast. But uh, as you can see, it's got different wear rails and TM, but you can still run TM parts in here, which is pretty fun. It may require some mods. But this aside. And uh, here is the slide. As you can see, what's nice is this comes with a buffer already, which is quite nice of them. So it cycles a, a tad faster, and the spring's kind of tough. Um, as you can see right here, I am running the um, stock TM motor right there. It is just a tad broken, but I mean, it doesn't really affect the gun. And um, as you can see, these haven't broken off here, which is surprising. Uh, so the nozzle seems to get stuck a lot into the, um, the hop unit. Like, most guns do that, sure. But I mean, this gun doesn't, like, it's really stuck in there. Because you need to force it in there, but I mean, I'm too lazy to, uh, I do have an upgraded nozzle, but I'm too lazy to put that right now. Um, so previously, I was trying to take the blowback out housing unit out. I couldn't even hit the selector switch down, so I was like, the fuck's problem, right? So I look in there, I'm like, wait, there's a, lot, there's a lot of junk in here. So then I clean it out, I take off the, um, take off the selector base, 
And then I'm start I start to think that did someone super glue the blowback housing unit inside too? So of course the number who whoever the brain dead bitch that owned this before it did actually do that so it was a bitch to get it out I actually cut my thumb open trying to do that but I eventually got it out I had to destroy the back plate to get it off though I did have a spear, spare back plate and I'm, I'm also using a different BBU since the other one's pretty um, pretty fucked up with the glue and I have to get that off later but in that the gun should work perfectly fine as you can see the selector base is, or the selector plate's working pretty good uh, just problem about these is they wear out pretty fast since the, um, the trigger bars are steel as you can see, there's a way right there. The parts are kind of greenish, as you can see, but I mean, it's only in the light. The little housing unit doesn't have too bad of wear. Mine's pretty old, though, which is, yeah. I can throw them in uh, an FMA loading nozzle in here, though, later. So, uh, for when this breaks. But yeah, the metal and the slides are a. I mean, it's really light, though, which is nice. Not like Weetex, heavy ass metal. So, taking out the hop unit, as you can see, kind of looks like a TM hop unit. You could possibly get mixed up with the TM hop unit. As you can see it has it tapes like TM. Uh, the way the hop bucking works is a little different from a TM though. I don't know if this is better or worse but it, this is also the Stark Arms ones as well. As you can see it's two it's two nubs pushing down the BB instead of just one but yeah. I don't not sure if that makes a difference at all but probably doesn't but to be honest just shot these ones before and they're not that accurate compared to a TM. You can see it's it, it gets it gets quite but I don't know if that creates a better air seal or anything, or maybe they just fucked up on the gun, who knows. Um, there's a joke flowing around on the uh, the forums, and just my friends, people are like, these guns come broken, which is actually pretty true. Because the, um, I'll get into that in a second, actually. But yeah, uh, I don't think, this this right here kind of looks like CNC right here, it looks, looks a little bit CNC'd right there. I don't think the slide is CNC aluminum, though. There, as you can see, it kind of looks CNC, but I highly don't slide a CNC, it's way too low quality to be CNC. Okay, but yeah, as you can see, here's the recoil spring. Out of focus on this sucks, asshole. But yeah, here it is, it's, it's sort of stiff, it's different than the ones that I mostly get. It seems there's a lot of variables with skeleton sidearms. So, um, like I said in the beginning, the, this is compatible with all Stark Arm parts. It's exactly the same. The OEM is the same. I do believe Stark Arms is a tad better, which is usually the case for OEMs. So, if you get from the original manufacturer, it's usually a tad better. But, yeah, everything should work. The only thing you would really need for this gun is stock TM hammer or the KM one and do a little bit mods to the full autos here. And then you're good to go and then you can fire all day with a steel hammer. But I'm um, not spending under 50 bucks, especially not on this because it's not worth the money. They, I heard they are making a salient arm slide for this um, for this gun though, which is nice. I might buy that if it comes to it. I also have a black frame waiting for this, and, and I need to get new rails though. The problem about getting the slide on this piece of garbage is it's like impossible to fit on. Not how much time I need. There we go. It doesn't really fire though, but I mean, as you can see, um, the magazines are somewhat TM compatible. Like these will fit in TMs and work in TM stock, but if you throw a metal slide on there, they usually don't work too right. Since they are, the mag cuts are a little lower right here. But yeah. Uh, also, the other thing right here. Um, fall air broke. Not a surprise, though. But, uh, yeah. I mean, one problem is, is if you haven't noticed right there, there's kind of a crack there. It's not it's not on the surface yet, but you can kind of see it's kind of, you know, not normal. It's not meant to be there. Yeah, that happens a lot with these uh, tinted guns in Canada. They usually crack a lot since they uh, can't. Uh, if you didn't know, um... And you didn't read the title or some for some reason. This is the 18C model, so it is full auto and semi. What is stupid about this gun is the G17 uses the same full auto feature, which is more prone to breakage. But I mean, what do I know, right? Uh, there's a slide release. You can see the metal is pretty shitty, so the slide's already wearing away. But you you do have the um the trigger safety as well. But yeah, you also have the um the trigger guard plug. I'm not sure what that's for. You also have a unique serial number right here. I don't have much time, so I'm trying to rush through this a little bit. But yeah. I usually do have a small Picatinny rail. This usually comes with the, this most of the time comes with the gun, the magazine. But I mean, I wouldn't really expect a gun in there sometimes, you know, because it is skeleton sidearms. Uh, you you should get a metal udder and plastic udder. I'm just using a TM one because it has less resistance. But uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think I missed anything. The magazine release is um, plastic with a metal plate, just like the TM 18 series. But yeah, I don't think there's um, anything else I can state. Uh, the base plate or the um, the firing pin plate is also plastic. 
um, the extractor is also its own piece. But yeah, it um, should cut off pretty soon, so yeah. Uh, thanks for watching, comment, rate, subscribe. Uh, don't think I missed anything. Uh, one more thing, the front sight seems to be a KWA stealth sight, but I heard these can fit real steel sights, not unlike the TMs, which are kind of nice. I heard these can also, f I don't know if these will fit in real steel holsters because they're a little thinner, but yeah. Anyways, that's about it. Thanks for watching, guys.